Uh, so a real-time image is going to be uh, basically the same process but continuous. Um, I think many of the transducers have uh, a transmitting and a receiving area. Um, and so you can kind of have a continuous loop going of, of sending out sound waves and then having those sound waves come back. The other benefit is that if we're looking at something that's thousands or millions of hertz, uh, you know, millions of frequencies, changes per second, that's well beyond the ability of our eye to process. And so we could send out sound waves and then take a pause and listen, then send out more sound waves, pause, and then listen. Uh, and in that process, we could still gather enough information that it could be displayed in a way that, that would look seamless or frame frameless uh, to our eye. So attenuation is a big part of what our images look like. Um, and it's something that I think we're all aware of. And so it has been built into many of the ultrasound machines that we can, in essence, turn up the gain or turn up the sensitivity of the receiver to listen at a slightly delayed period. Because the thought is, if it has to travel farther, then it's going to take it longer to return. And so something that's deeper in the body, those sound waves are going to be returning to the, the transducer to the receiving portion later. So after, say, a thousandth of a second, the transducer may listen kind of more closely so that those sound waves that are taking longer to return are, are displayed as brighter so that if fewer of those sound waves make it back, they're kind of artificially given a little bit more weight so that the deeper part of the picture still looks brighter. Um, attenuation is also something that we often use for diagnostic purposes. So it kind of goes both ways that we know that a normal liver is pretty homogenous and so the sound waves travel through it pretty easily and reflect from the, the far end well. But often if someone has fatty liver disease, for example, the fat molecules interspersed within the liver change how much the sound waves are attenuated. So we know that if we're looking at a liver and it's attenuating sound waves much more than normal, that's a sign that there's something else going on, not necessarily that there's a problem with our machine. So attenuation is something that we can somewhat correct for by increasing the gain on our machine, but it's also something that we often use to try to interpret what's going on in that organ. So just like attenuation, artifacts and ultrasound are something that can be very useful for uh, diagnostic purposes. Um, a good example of that is a simple cyst. I think often on CT scans, especially if something is very small, if it approaches the resolution of the CT scan, it's hard for us to say what it is. It could be a simple cyst, it could be a complicated cyst, or it could be a tumor that just has a little bit of fluid in it. On ultrasound, we have the benefit of a simple cyst should just be filled with fluid. And so the sound wave is going to travel through fluid differently than it is uh, soft tissue next to it. Um, part of the artifact of a simple cyst is that when many of the sound waves hit the back wall, there's a very quick change in, in speed from the, the speed through the fluid to the speed in the soft tissue behind it. So we usually have uh, an increase in echogenicity or an increase in brightness on our monitor from the back wall of a cyst where more sound waves are reflected at that interface between the two speeds and the two densities of tissue. Another part of that is we often have what we call increased through transmission, which just means that when it's displayed on our machine, when the monitor picks up that cyst, it looks like there's almost a reverse shadow behind the cyst. So you have a round dark area where none of the sound waves are being reflected. And then behind that, you have a shadow of brightness. And that brightness is the opposite of what we talked about with attenuation. More of the sound waves make it through the fluid because it's homogeneous. And so then the computer is listening and thinking that since it's getting more sound waves back, that it must be brighter when it's not necessarily, it's just an artifact of the sound waves traveled through the fluid differently than they did the soft tissue next to it. So we get two different artifacts, one from the difference between the fluid and the soft tissue behind it, and one between the fluid and the soft tissue next to it. And both of those are things that we look for when we see a round, uh, dark structure on ultrasound to try to decide if it's a simple cyst or not a simple cyst. Uh, there are several other artifacts that can be really beneficial. One that we use for diagnostic purposes um, is kind of the opposite. Instead of increase through transmission, it's just shadowing. So we talked about how increased attenuation in the liver, for example, can be uh, reflective of hepatic steatosis or fatty liver disease. One of the things that we common look at, commonly look at aside from the liver is the kidneys. If we're looking at the kidneys and we see a bright spot, it can be many different things. It can be a focus, uh, a small area of fat. It can be a blood vessel that we catch on end. Or more importantly, for diagnostic purposes, it can be a kidney stone. If it's a kidney stone, it's going to be very dense and it's going to block more of the sound waves. And so then there will be a true shadow behind that. So if 
we see a bright spot within the kidney, we want to see posterior acoustic shadowing to tell us that it's probably solid and not just a blood vessel.